In this video, I'll tell you about the major update which is coming to the Cisco certification program in February 2020. I'll explain exactly what the changes are, why Cisco are doing it, how it's going to affect you, and what you should do if you're currently studying for a Cisco certification. The date that these changes take effect is February the 24th of 2020 and all certification tracks and levels are going to be affected. The main certification levels that are available now remain the same. That's the CCNA, the CCNP and the CCIE. But there's major changes to the tracks that I'll talk about starting on the next slide. The different tracks are being removed at the CCNA level is the major change there. So right now there's lots of different tracks available, but after February 2020, there's going to be just the one. The tracks are not all being removed at the CCMP and the CCIE level like they are at the CCNA, but they are going to be consolidated there. And the entry level CCENT and CCT certifications are being retired. The reason for that is that if you looked at a job advert now, most likely the lowest level you would see an employer asking for is the CCNA. Most employers haven't actually heard of the CCENT and the CCT. So because of that, Cisco are going to retire them and the new entry level certification is going to be just the CCNA. You don't have the lower level of CCENT and CCT available after that. So you can still get them now up to February 2020, but after February 2020, CCENT and CCT are going to go. So let's look at the current CCNA tracks that are available. There's CCNA routing and switching, CCNA Cloud, CCNA Collaboration, CCNA Cyber Ops, Data Center, Industrial, Security, Service Provider, Wireless, and Design. So you can see that there's nine different tracks there. And the reason that that came about, well, Cisco were originally a routing and switching company, and their first ever certification way back in the day was the CCNA routing and switching. But Cisco began to branch out into other technologies, and as they did that, they also released certifications that would apply to those new technologies. And that's occurred over several years to where we are today, where there's actually nine different tracks. So you see that this can be confusing for people, and also it's a lot of exams if you wanted to be certified in each track because they each have their own exams. So the main change that is happening at the CCNA level in this update in February is that after this, the available CCNA tracks will be, that's it, just the one, the one CCNA. So all of those different tracks are going away and we're going to be replaced with just the one single CCNA. There is also a new certification coming out, which is Cisco Certified DevNet Associate. That is for you if you're a programmer who's going to be working on programming Cisco network devices. And that's something that's actually getting a lot more popular now. So that's why Cisco have released that new certification. Okay, so all of those different CCNA tracks, the nine different tracks that you saw on the previous slide will no longer be available after February. As I said earlier, the CCENT, that's the ICND-1 exam, number 100-105, and the ICND-2 exam, which is 200-105, are also going to retire. Everything is going to be replaced with a single CCNA exam, which is the 200-301. That new exam consolidates all tracks, so everything that was covered on the previous slide is going to go into that one exam, and it's also going to include automation and programmability as well, all in a single exam. The last day to take any of the current exams is February the 23rd of 2020. And the first day to take the new exams is February the 24th of 2020. So this is a little bit different than what normally happens when there's an update. Normally when there's an update, there's going to be a period where you can take both the old and the new exams. So normally there's about a three month period where you can still take the old exams and you can also take the new exams then as well. 
But because this is such a major update, there isn't that period where we're both going to be available. It's just going to be a clean cut over on February the 24th. If you achieve a certification before February the 24th, you will automatically receive the equivalent new certification after the cutover date. So if you achieve the CCNA before February 24th, you don't have to go and take the new CCNA after that. You will still be a CCNA after the cutover date. So you can take the existing exam any date up to February the 23rd. And then after that, you're still going to be the CCNA example for another three years after that. You will need to recertify three years after the date that you passed the exam. That's the same as what happens now anyway. Okay, so the required exams for this CCNA. To achieve the CCNA routing and switching before February the 24th, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can either take both the ICND 1 100-105 exam, which also gets you the CCNT, and the ICND 200-105 exams. So doing it that way, there's two different exams. Some people find it easier to break the exams up into two separate exams. The other way you can do it is to take the single CCNA 200-125 exam. That's what I usually recommend because you just have to take a single trip to the test center. But if you'd like to break it down into two different exams, if you find that easier, you can take the ICND-1 and the ICND-2. So that's how it works currently. After February the 24th, to get the CCNA, you take the single CCNA 200-301 exam. And that doesn't just include the routing and switching questions. It's going to include questions from all the other tracks like security, wireless, etc. in there as well. So why are Cisco doing this? Why are they making the change? Well, the reason is that engineers working on real world Cisco networks are typically expected to have skills across multiple tracks. Now, when people do what's called the CCNA now, if you just call it the CCNA and you don't specify the track it is, you're talking about the CCNA routing and switching. But that doesn't really cover any information about, for example, wireless. If you go in to work as a network engineer in a real world network, then you're going to be expected to understand wireless. You're also going to be expected to know some security, etc. as well. So you saw the way that it evolved before it was because it started with routing and switching and then Cisco added those other tracks on over time, but it's becoming confusing and unmanageable now. So we're consolidating it into a single exam which will give you the entry level skills across all of those different tracks that you need to work in real world networks. So how is the exam going to change? Well, each of the current nine different CCNA tracks has its own official five day classroom training course that gets you ready for the exam. Those nine different week long courses are going to be replaced with a single implementing and administering Cisco solutions course. Now, as I'm recording this video, the courseware for that hasn't actually been released yet, but I'm guessing it's probably gonna be a five day course as well. At the most, it would be a two week course, but honestly, that would be difficult for employers that are sending their staff on this training. So I'm guessing Cisco are probably gonna make it their standard five day course again. And obviously you can't fit nine weeks of training into a single five day or maybe 10 day course. So because of that, the new CCNA is gonna cover foundational knowledge and skills. The more advanced topics that would previously be covered in each of those CCNA tracks are gonna move on to the CCNP level. So you don't have to learn everything that you had to now and all the new stuff as well. We're gonna to have to cut some of the material that's at the CCNA level now out, move it over to the CCNP. So what should you do if you're currently studying for the CCNA or if you're thinking of doing that? Well, my CCNA course includes a suggested timetable to complete your studies in six weeks if you spend a couple of hours a day and have one day off a week. If you're watching this video before December 2019, I suggest, I highly recommend that you take the current exams to get your CCNA before the changeover. Because if you're watching this before December, then you've got at least 12 weeks until the changeover, which is plenty of time to study for and pass your CCNA. 
And when you've done it before that cutover date, you're still a CCNA after the cutover as well. You're still going to be qualified as a CCNA for the three year period. Another benefit you get is you'll have advanced routing and switching skills you can use to attain the CCNP enterprise after that. And honestly, my opinion is that if you wait for the new exam instead of the CCNA now, really you're just copying out. You're using that as an excuse to procrastinate and to put off your studies. There's no reason to do so. There's actually benefits of taking it and getting it done now. And obviously the quicker that you pass the CCNA, then the quicker you can move up the networking ladder and also move on to other qualifications. So I highly recommend do not procrastinate if you're watching this before December, take the current CCNA, get it done, and then you can move on to the other more advanced qualifications. That is also actually the official advice that Cisco give on their website as well. Okay, so that covered the CCNA. Moving on to the CCNP. The different tracks that are available now are very similar to CCNA. I won't read them all out again. It's the same as it was for the CCNA, except that there's no cyber ops or industrial tracks at the CCNP level that we do have at the CCNA. Those tracks are being consolidated after the update. So the new tracks will be CCNP Enterprise, that covers both wired and wireless networking, CCMP data center, security, service provider, collaboration, and a new qualification of Cisco certified DevNet professional. Again, network programmability is becoming more popular now. It's a fairly new technology. That's why Cisco are releasing these new qualifications now. So the required exams for the CCMP. Before February 24th, you need to pass either three or four exams, depending on the track to get your CCNP. Those are professional level exams after you've done the CCNA. But the prerequisite for the CCNP is typically you have to have at least a CCNT to do that. Real world, most people will have a CCNA before they move on to the CCNP. From February 24th, the changes are that you only need to pass two exams for each track rather than three or four. Those two exams are a technology code exam, which covers the foundational and common concepts, and a concentration exam, which is a more advanced, deeper dive into the technology. So how about the CCMP transition? What happens if you're currently studying for the CCMP? Well, if you pass any of the exams in the current certification, any of those three or four exams before February the 24th, you'll receive badging for the corresponding new exams and credit towards the new CCMP certification. If you achieve a certification before February 24th, so that's any certification, including the CCMP, you will automatically receive the equivalent new certification after the cutover date. And you will need to recertify three years after the date you pass the exam. So it's the same as the CCNA. Whether you do it before or after the cutover date, you've got that qualification and it's valid for three years. Moving on to the CCIE, the different CCIE tracks that are available now are routing and switching, collaboration, data center, security, service provider, wireless, and design. So it's the same as the CCMP, except that there's no cloud track. Again, similar to the CCMP, these are being consolidated. In fact, the tracks at the CCIE level are exactly the same as the new tracks at the CCMP level. So there is CCMP Enterprise Infrastructure, which covers wired networks, CCMP Enterprise Wireless, which is wireless, obviously, Data Center, Security, Service Provider, and Collaboration. And a CCIE for DevNet is planned as well, but it's not guaranteed it's going to be ready by February next year. But they are planning to come out with that later. The required exams for the CCIE before February 24th, you need to pass a written and a lab exam for each track. And then from February the 24th, very similar, it's also going to be two exams, a written exam and a lab exam. So you need to pass the technology code exam, which is the same as the CCMP level technology code exam. So right now, the CCIE written exam in 2019 is different than the CCMP exams. But from 2020, that technology code exam, that is both the CCMP and a CCIE level exam. So pass that, and then you still need to do the lab, 
With the lab, that's going to be broken into two modules. So design is part of the CCIE now. There's going to be a design module in the lab, which lasts for three hours, and then deploy, operate, and optimize, which lasts for five hours. So the CCIE lab exam is still a hardcore eight-hour exam. Automation and network programmability are also going to be included in the CCIE level exams. Specialist certifications will also continue to be available after the cutover as well. So if you pass an individual CCMP level exam, that will typically give you a specialist qualification. Also for exams outside the main certification programs, for example, FlexPod Design Specialist. So those specialist exams, nothing changes there. They're still going to be the same. For recertification, after the cutover, the recertification period for all qualifications is three years. Right now, some qualifications, the recertification period was three years and some it was only two years. But after the cutover, it's going to be three years for all of the different qualifications. You can take an exam to recertify or you can use continuing education credits, which you get from taking official training courses, either online or in the classroom, for attending Cisco Live, etc. Okay, so that was it. That covers all of the changes to the Cisco certification programs. I'll include some useful links below this video. I'll have links for the at a glance PDF, also the certification changes main page and frequently asked questions. I'll also have a link for my CCNA course as well. If you want to take the most highly rated course online to get your CCNA. Okay, that's pretty much everything I needed to tell you. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll get back to you. This is a major change, so I'm expecting there's going to be quite a bit of discussion across the community about this. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with Cisco routers and switches, you can download my free Cisco CCNA lab guide. It's got over 400 pages of lab exercises, so you'll get loads of practice with Cisco technologies. Just click the link you can see above my head now. And if you want to take my full Cisco CCNA bootcamp training course, you can click on the video you can also see on this page. Thanks.